Okay, let me just close out of here to make sure you know how to get back there. I want to show you a couple of things. Uh, this video and the next video, we're just really going to focus on the Visual Studio environment, the BIDS environment, the SQL Server Business Intelligence Development Studio, blah. Okay, that's it. I want you to be comfortable with it. I want you to be able to open it up. Somebody's sitting there looking over your shoulder and know what you're doing. So here we go. Um, first thing I'll show you. I know I showed it to you before, but, you know, some people want to see it. If I launch this, look at that. It's the Visual Studio Shell. Gosh, I wish I could slow that down. Um, does it show it here? No. Um, there, there. Uh, see, it's, you can barely see it. This is for the Shell. Okay, this isn't the full-blown Visual Studio 2008 Professional Edition or anything like that. This is just the shell. And when I open it, I said, wish, let me think. Um, I don't think I can get it to slow down. <laughs> but you can see it right there. Oh, it says Visual Studio shell. It doesn't, ah, you can't see it. But that's all it is. This is the shell. It's not the full-blown Visual Studio. But so I launched the BIDS tool, the B-I-D-S, the Business Intelligence Development Studio. And it's still the Visual Studio, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to right click on Visual Studio and I'm going to pin it to my start menu for later demos. And what that'll do is that just makes a a static, if you will, is a uh, an always present icon right there in the root of the start menu, so that I could just go, bam. And of course, it's the same thing. It launches. Everything is the exact same thing. If we go to the task manager, they both say dev env dot exe. Um, and I'm also going to drag it down here. And I'm I what I do. I've already done it, but I'll do it again. Um, see I'll delete it from an earlier or maybe that was the installation that did it um, I'll just go to the Visual Studio and I'm right clicking and I'm holding it down not releasing it and I just drag it down here I love this this is the uh, you know copy it this is the quick launch bar and if you don't have this on Vista or Windows 2008 it is the toolbar so you right click in the system tray uh, and you can get it there. Now in Windows 7, I have read that it looks different. I have not really played with the quick launch bar in Windows 7, so I can't say if it's different. Uh, or I think the screenshots that I've seen are pretty different, though. Anyhow, so it's down here. If I want to, I can just launch it. And later on in the course, I will. There's no need to just have to go you know, three or four clicks to get where we want to go. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to get comfortable with Visual Studio. So let's do it. So I'm going to go ahead and launch it. And I'm going to go ahead and close that. I don't need all the clutter. That little splash screen doesn't help me in any way. Um, there's two terms that I want you to know. First one is the project. Okay, so let's think of, um, uh, give me a second. I'm going to try to describe it. Okay, so a project. Um, uh, maybe it's easier to start with this term solution. Okay, so this is a solution and it contains n projects. Okay, and a project might be, uh, let me come down here. So here's my solution container, if you will. And so here I have a C-sharp assembly project. That'd be project number one. And then I have an SSIS uh, ETL project would be another project. And then I have a reporting services report project. Uh, and then I have an ASP.NET website project. So they're all independent pieces here. I'm not going to have an SSIS, ETL, and C Sharp project. Okay, I'm going to have an SSIS project. I can use C Sharp in that SSIS, ETL project, but it's not a C Sharp project. Okay? And that C Sharp assembly, that would be a, 
a DLL would be, if you're not familiar with the term assembly, it's basically the output of which would be a DLL. And we would be able to use that later on. And you can create dependencies. So I can say that, uh, for example, I'll use green over here, that my reporting services project is dependent on this C sharp assembly project. So it would build the C sharp assembly and then it would build my reporting services project. Or I guess it would have been more appropriate to do the ASP.NET uh, in that particular case, but you get the idea. You can set up dependencies between these. You can set up build orders so that when it compiles these, it compiles one or two before it does the rest. So a solution contains projects. One project, let's just talk about SSIS for a moment. One SSIS project can contain N SSIS packages. So to help us out here, let's just go back. We'll launch the Visual Studio again. This time we want to make a new project. And let's just stick with the easy thing, the integration services project right now. And it defaults on Windows 2008 and Vista, I believe Windows 7 is the same, to putting it in your, you know, your username may be different, but it's going to put it in your profiles documents folder, Visual Studio 8, 2008 projects. Okay. And it does not, though, default to creating a directory. So in other words, with this box unchecked, it's not really saving anything. It looks like files, it seems like it's doing things, but it's not really saving it. So if you actually want it to create files and folders, you need to check that box. And then you give it a name. So Scott's SSIS, for example. So just a, a tip for naming your projects and managing packages and projects, you will generally have a project for each type of thing you're doing. You will not have a project for every SSIS package. You will have a project for data warehouse. And you might have 40 packages underneath that particular project. You'd have then a project for uh, access migration. You might only have two packages under that one. Okay, so a project you want to map to a business function, something that is related. You probably, although you could, probably don't want to just have one gigantic project with 300 different packages in it. It just gets unwieldy at that point. Just go ahead and create them according to the job function. That's just how I do it. Now let me say, how I do it doesn't mean it's always the right way or the best way. If your organization already has it done one particular way, do it that way if it makes sense or make suggestions to other techniques. Just because I do something one particular way doesn't mean it's the best way. It's just the way that I do it. It's the way that my experience has shown me. My experience might not be the best. You may have found a better one or somebody in your organization may have found a better way. So anyhow, we're creating an SSIS project. So Scott's SSIS, and what we're doing to describe this screen here, okay, we are creating a solution here. Okay, so that's that big box that we talked about okay, that can have multiple projects in it. Okay. So I could have one solution for all of my SSIS. And then I could have multiple SSIS projects. So I could have the um, um, access migration project and that might have the two packages then I would have the data warehouse project that might have a hundred packages in it okay and then I'd have the website maintenance packages in them each of those are three different projects within the same solution called Scott's SSIS okay right there and the name of this particular project is going to be Integration Services Project 13. <laughs> probably not the best one. I will probably change that to be Access Migration, for example. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to change this to be Access Migration. All right. And I want to make sure that I create a directory because let's go ahead and go take a look at this file and folder here. And you could see that from past uh, operating systems, from previous 
Uh, this has been around a while. There's been lots of projects and things here. But there's not one called S Scott's SSIS. So we can actually, all of this stuff was just junk. It's not necessary. It's going to leave the macros. That's an installed folder uh, by the system. And so when I say OK, it's going to create the directory, Scott's SSIS, behind the scenes. That is the solution folder. So I go down here, and you can see here's the solution file, which is very, very important with respect to Visual Studio. This file tells Visual Studio what projects belong to this solution. Okay. And you can see that you know our access migration project has been added as a project folder. Now, if we were to take a look at these files, like this is just a text file. I could open it. I use uh, my favorite text editor is one called TextPad. Uh, you, you, know, you could use Notepad or WordPad, um, whatever. It does. There's so many of them here. But you can see this is a solution file, and it's telling it to load up this particular project called Access Migration. And you scroll over if you wanted to read it. You can see that it uses a file type, a project file, dtproj. Let me ask you this. What was the old version? What was the previous name of Integration Services? Data Transformation Services, and they changed it to Integration Services. You are many times in the internals going to still see DTS or DT, Data Transformation. The, when they made the name change to Integration Services, I still remember when it happened. It was actually late in the game of SQL Server 2005 development. And so they'd already had all the files were DTS run, DTS exec, DT exec. And they didn't go back and change the names to SSIS exec. And so still in SQL Server 2008, we have that hangover, if you will. And so it's basically in this solution file telling it to go to this location, sorry, the access migration folder, and go underneath that folder and open this particular file. So let's go look at that file. That's in the access migration. You could see down here, there's the DT proj. And we can come over here. And if you are needing to look at the extensions for all of these, then you need to go to view. And you could see by default that it is hiding the extensions that it already knows. So I'm going to tell it not to do that because I want to be able to see the actual extension. And so I tell it right here, here's this one. and Again, I'll open it with TextPad. And now you can see, this is an XML file. And you can see uh, this is from this particular version of integration services. Here's the name. Uh, you can see we don't have any data sources defined. I mean, we've got a, a very blank system that we have. Um, but we do have one package. And you, again, see that term DTS. That's that old hangover from the 7.0 SQL Server 2000 days the naming issue here. But we have a single package. And this is the extension that it gave to this file. So when we created this particular project and solution, it created this file calling it package.dtsx. Again, DTS, right? <laughs> Not SSIS, but it's DTSX. They used to be called DTS. Now they're called DTSX, just like it used to be in Word.doc, then in Word 2007 it was .docx, right? Okay. So if you opened this one and took a look at it, again, this is going to be an XML file. And you can see that the, we have the entity here, the property, and then we have the schema uh, being referenced up here, the XML namespace uh, being referenced. And you can see who created this one, what computer was it built on, when was it built? However, don't let me scare you. Okay, back up. Take a deep breath. You don't have to play in that file. <laughs> you do not have to know XML. Nobody here is expecting you to know this. I'm just kind of trying to teach you a little bit of the behind-the-scenes stuff so that you're going to be comfortable in the environment. What you're going to do, what you'll work with, let's close out of all this junk here, is look what happened inside of the Visual Studio. It created in this Solution Explorer, which if 
by the way you get something that looks like this you'll need to go view solution explorer you get in the access migration pack uh, project you have a package called package.dtsx awesome double click on it it brings up this over here the package development environment okay, so this is where we create our packages you've got different tabs that we're gonna cover at different points not really gonna break down into going into this I don't want to scare you too much right now but then it also had open that I closed the toolbox so view toolbox and these are all the little pieces that we're going to have to discuss. We're going to learn how to send email. We're going to learn how to execute DTS packages from SQL Server 2000. We'll learn how to transfer objects between SQL servers. We're going to play with all of that kind of stuff. And it's so easy. You just simply drag and drop onto that environment. And now you can play around and do what you need to. Okay. And there's going to be customizations. I'm not going to do anything. You can see the, the red with the white X. They're just telling me that I've got to configure it, that something's wrong. Um, fairly easy uh, to understand that particular metaphor there. But if we wanted to, now we could add new packages over here. So I just would right-click on the SSIS packages. I'd say, hey, I want a new one. And it creates it just like that. You see what I mean? A project can have multiple packages. I could just keep adding new packages, and they're all just going to be empty. I can go back to this one, and you see it still has that one task that we dragged onto the workspace. Okay? But the other ones, I don't have any. Now I give them meaningful names. I just right-click and rename. Um, migrate table X. And it's going to rename some internals. Uh, this one down here might be uh, backup DBs. Okay. And so it's created these .dtsx files that if we were to take a look at the Visual Studio, remember that location it put it in up here, the uh, user, administrator, etc. So I go up here and you can see there are those .dtsx files that we've been creating. We don't have to worry about right-clicking and knowing XML. We just drag and drop in this little cool environment here. Okay. All right, I'm going to stop right here. We kind of went a little long in this video. Let's come back in the next video and keep touring a little bit of this Visual Studio to make sure we're comfortable before we get deeper into Chapter 1.